Hello, everybody. Um, it's really nice to be here today. Um, I'm going to tell you about a crazy idea that I had a few years ago with a bunch of friends and how you can do something with having no plan, no money, no resources, and in a very short time, turn it into something that really has taken on a life of its own. So, this is the 3,000 square foot former weaver's cottage that Marx may once have uh, written in, we think. Um, and we were as a bunch of people in the pub one day and we were talking about hacker spaces. What is a hacker space? And what are these people in the States doing? And um, we had, there was a, there's a group called Noisebridge that you might have heard of, but essentially it's a, a, a place and originally it's always been thought of for geeks to hang out and make things and drill things and laser cut things and 3D print things and program things and all sorts of other stuff like that. And we thought, well, the, there's nothing like that in Manchester. There's nothing like that, really, in the rest of the country. Why don't we make a space ourselves? So we were sat in the pub, and we're like, well, this is never going to happen, because the rents around here are terrible and everything like that. And we noticed that the skate shop opposite was empty, and they'd taken the chameleon, and they'd taken the skate ramp and everything else. Um, and so this building was empty, and that was, in fact, the first picture that we took of the building. So I spoke to the landlord and said, well, I know it's a bit cheeky, but do you want to give me a space for free? I know it's 3,000 square foot. I know it's prime retail area. I know it's in the northern quarter. I know pretty much loads of people want it, but can we have it? And he said, yes. So I said, thanks. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, from that, we thought, bloody hell, we've got a space. What do you do with a space? I've no idea. I've never run a space before. Um, and so we thought, well, I guess people want to come to this space. So we thought, well... Maybe we can ask all the groups who came, used to meet in pubs and bars, or people that we've heard of who talk on the net to each other, why don't we just get them in, in, in person? So we asked some of those groups, and they said, yes, please, we'll come to your group, and we'll come to your building, and we'll have our groups here. And we started with just four groups at Mad Lab um, that met for the first few months. And then a few more groups came along, and a few more groups came along, and a few more, more groups came along after that. Um, and suddenly we had 30 groups, and all these groups started growing the number of people who came to their groups. And then we had a few more groups, and now, today, we have over 70 community groups who meet twice, uh, two groups every night. We could probably do with space for three or four, to be honest. Um, and the groups have gone from having a few people in them to having 50 or 100 or 500 people in them and in fact one of the groups is over a thousand in the membership and they can't fit into mad lab anymore so they're going off somewhere else soon which is good um and i just want to show you a little bit about what these groups do and so this is our 3d printing group with their 3d printers which they have 3d printed and um and this is yoda with a headache i'm not quite sure what happens halfway through um something terrible happened to him um, but we've been doing 3D printing for, for years and years and years now. Um, and we hold really cool events and drop-in sessions and all that kind of stuff. And, and it's free for everybody to use, um, which is fantastic. And um, we've run workshops as well. And here's an automator workshop that we had uh, recently. And um, we are now... Uh, I'm going to say on the internet, where's the camera? We are now the biggest makerspace in the UK which is amazing. We have 15,000 plus annual users. Um, we have, we're open seven days a week all the time. Um, and we do different things now as well. We don't just have these groups that come in to meet. And we have all sorts from Raspberry Pi uh, to Arduino, um, jewelry making groups, 3D printer groups, uh, graphic novel groups, DIY bio groups. Groups meet groups and form other groups out of those groups, and then those groups do longer day sessions at Mad Lab, which turns into weekends, which turns into people saying, hey, you're quite good at what you do to those groups in our communities, and why don't you want, do you, do you want a job with us? So um, recently, we've just had two really great success stories, but there's tons of them. Um, the guy who organizes our 
Game Jam, it's called, people come along and make digital games, was headhunted by the BBC, so he now, well, now works for BBC R&D. And we just had really good news that the guy who runs our Raspberry Pi which Jam, which is a microcomputer, so he runs a session about that, um, and he's been doing it ever since it start, uh, since the technology came out, uh, about just over nearly two years ago now. We ran the first ever Raspberry Pi Jam with him, which is now an international thing. And he's now been headhunted, and he's now working for the Raspberry Pi Foundation in Cambridge, which is amazing. And that's just two stories of many, many, many that we have. And so, um, oh yeah, and there's another story actually about a, a field recording group, and a group of people came to us and said, we really like sound, said, good. And um, so we like recording it and playing it to other people and sharing these noises, which is quite unusual. We said, yeah, fine, yes, come and, come and have your group meeting here. And they did some fantastic work, really beautiful soundscapes put together, and, and they had an exhibition at Mad Lab, then they had an exhibition at a library in Manchester, then that went to the British Library, and then that went on a gallery tour in Japan. So from just one small idea, it's gone around the world. Um, I've been vetoed from talking about DIY Bio um, now, because uh, Asa Kalo from Mad Lab is going to be talking about that this afternoon, but we were approached by the FBI, it's true, um, with the strangest email of my life. Um, and they said, you run this DIY bio group, um, you use new technologies and kind of get cheaper bio stuff now than you could ever done before. And you can, you can get things that used to be like, well, they're still at 5,000 pounds and you pay 500 quid for it or you might make it yourself for 50. So can you come and talk to us about that in San Francisco at NASA HQ? Yes, please. Um, so um, we did that. Well, Ace will be telling you more about that. But those are the kinds of things that happen when you put yourself out there and just go, I have no idea what's going to happen. But let's keep saying yes and let's say yes to everything. Um, so just moving on a little bit to kind of what else happened after we, we, we kind of set up was we said, well, what else can we do? What, what, what else do people want to do? So we started looking at collaborations with people. Who can we collaborate with? Well, one of the people that we collaborated with was the Wellcome Trust. Um, another group was Lancaster University. So this picture um, is from a workshop that we held about a year ago now, I think. Um, what was really interesting about this project was it was for homeless, it was a homeless charity that was dealing with people who were um, uh, without a home or recently rehoused, who were leading quite chaotic lives. The charity that looked after them and the university and ourselves. And so um, we were looking at ways that we could use technology to improve people's lives, but that was led by them in, the, in finding the solution. And so. Uh, in the end, we came up with an RFID card that you could swipe and it would print out your appointments at the doctors or at the job center or anywhere else because not many people who are homeless or recently rehoused have the Filofax. Um, so it was a really useful system to kind of put around town. But one of the sessions that we did to come to that um, kind of conclusion um, and, and, and come up with a finished product is we got people from... Lancaster University, from Mad Lab, um, from the homeless charity, and said, right, well, let's kind of set ourselves free with some technology. So we've got, kind of, I think it's an Arduino project in, um, and uh, which is, again, another microcomputer. I think we're making a lie detector test. Um, it's a quite a simple, straightforward thing to do, and it's fun and interactive. And at the end of the session, um, one of the homeless guys said, um, God, you know, it's a, it's a big world out there, and, and I'm quite good at making this technology, and I've, I've realized that I've been wasting my life, and I'm going to do something about it. And you just think, bloody hell, you know, that's from a two-hour session with some new technology. And because this guy, the guy who, who was the best at it was this homeless guy, he was in front of professors and researchers and all sorts of people, and he was the best at doing it. And it's a fantastic that shows that technology is this great leveler. And when we followed up about him um, a few months later, the charity said, you know, he's been turning up early to meetings. He never did that before. He's been, um, he's been using the shower facilities, he's been making appointments. It's amazing, and it's all from that one session. So you just kind of think, well, if technology can do that in two hours, what can it do over a sustained period of time? 
Um, and so we also um, look after a massive bunch of under 18s um, at Mad Lab who are into coding and new technologies. And so every year we host something called Young Rewired State. Um, and uh, we are the biggest YRS center in the country. And this year we helped the BBC set up a center. Um, and we also had a center here in Oldham. And um, that uh, project is all about engaging kids in technology, in coding in particular. They come up with apps over a week. It's kids from like six to 18. Um, and some really funny stories have come from it. So you, you might have a group of 17 year olds um, presenting the app. And this actually happened this year. Um, they said, well, you know, this is what we're doing and this is the plan, but we're not really sure about the website and what it looks like. And this kind of seven-year-old puts his hand up and goes, yeah, it doesn't look very good, but I'm excellent at making websites and so I shall fix yours. Um, and, um, and he also appeared on the BBC um, uh, recently as well. And they interviewed him and they said, well, why do you want to be a developer when you grow up? And he said, well, my dad said, when you go to the job center and you ask them for a job in IT, they give you 60,000 pounds. And that's why I want to be a developer. So <laughs> thanks, Zach. Um, <laughs> uh, so this year, the great news um, about YRS, and we do lots of other stuff with under 18s throughout the year, is that um, the whole shebang all meets up at the end of the week. So every center in the country meets up, and it's now gone um, and to, to the States, to Ramallah, all over the world now, uh, this, this, this thing. And um, uh, they're going to be holding the big UK meet in Manchester for the first time. So over 1,000 kids are going to be descending on Manchester next year. So if anybody knows of a really big space that you can, uh, can hire us, then please let me know. Um, what else we do? We do collaborations with art galleries. Here's a, uh, 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 yes, a, 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 uh, I'm not quite sure how to describe it really, but basically it's a bike powered projector, um, which was projecting a film that we made um, in the Castlefield Gallery. Um, and uh, these lovely ladies were part of a community outreach scheme that we did called Digital Skills for Women in Manchester. I didn't say we were good at naming things. Um, <laughs> DSWM for short. Um, but we took um, the idea of saying, well, you know, we have lots of developers and coders and experts in house. Well, let's share that and let's go to the communities where people need those skills. And we're not just gonna teach you how to write an email and you know, write a CV, and although that's important, but let's also teach these women how to code and to create and to program. So that's what we did, and we reached over 140 women in the last six months. And what we're going to be doing next year is looking at make, putting together accredited courses um, because that's where the community say they want to go, and that's what we'll give them. And this little fat chap here, a little fellow, um, is um, represents something else that we've started doing recently as well. Is that we noticed that lots of people, lots of quite London-based companies, quite a lot of the time. Um, are putting on um, uh, you know, new courses and things, particularly in coding or WordPress or projection mapping, and they're really blooming expensive. And so we said, well, what can we do? Well, how can we upskill people in Manchester and the Northwest and the wider region? So let's put on our own courses. So we go out and we find the best tutors to teach what we think are the best courses or the newest courses. And so just this weekend, we had a bird taxidermy course. This is the guy from the mouse taxidermy course, of course. Um, and um, we also hold WordPress classes as well with Mike Little, the co-founder, who Simon was just talking about, um, because we are really lucky to have him in Stockport. And we also um, teach with a guy called Elliot Woods as well, who's one of the leading proponents in projection mapping in the world. And again, we draw on the community that exists. We draw on the experts that we know about. And we say, hey, come, come in, come get involved in the community and see what you can do. Um, and and we get, you know, we've been getting recognition for that. We recently talked at the Welcome Collection. And Simon Werrett from UCL said this about us, which was nice. Um, and I mean, what we do do, and I think you hopefully kind of conveyed to you, is that we, we just experiment. We, we take different ideas. We just say, sod it. Don't we really know how this is going to work out, but let's just do it anyway, and we'll work out how to fund it after. 
Um, and with that in mind, well, this, this shop, we don't actually run a bag shop, by the way. It's the only photo that I've got of it. Um, but we said, well, why don't we run a shop? So we've just recently set up a shop in the Northern Quarter, just down the road from Mad Lab. And um, I probably can't mention kind of shops in particular that we're not modeling ourselves on, but quite well-known electronic shops that aren't necessarily that good. And we said, let's be the opposite of that. Let's be really good and let's get cool stuff and let's show people what Raspberry Pis are and Arduinos are and let's show them how they can make cool projects. And then let's teach them how to make that in the building as well. So this is what we're in this little, tiny little building here is what we're developing at the moment with the High Street Innovation Fund and the council have helped us out a bit. Um, and so without, I think that's all I need to say now really. I think, I think I've probably talked long enough, haven't I? Um, so thank you very much indeed, everybody. Um, and um, I hope I've given you a flavor of what we do and how we do it and why we do it. Thanks very much.